Welcome back to the channel where I go and actually give you my recommendations for both main target audience members and casuals for new streaming television and movie shows out there. Today, I'm going to go ahead and actually give you the recommendation for Eric on Netflix. For those that are target audience members, these are people that are fans of Benedict Cumberbatch. You are a fan of psychological thrillers, crime mysteries, things of that nature. I'm going to suggest that you watch the first two episodes of this series. For casual viewers that are not fans of Benedict Cumberbatch, not big fans of psychological thrillers, I'm also going to recommend that you watch the first two episodes. Now, stay tuned for a deeper dive on why I gave those recommendations. The kid's been gone for over a week. Don't give up on him. Eric is going to help me find Edgar. Eric is a crime drama limited series that premiered on Netflix in May of 2024. The limited series consists of six episodes that average about 55 minutes apiece. It stars Benedict Cumberbatch as Vincent Anderson, Gabby Hoffman as Cassie Anderson, and Dan Fogler as Lenny Wilson. Now, IMDb's, the IMDb synopsis has, when Edgar, a young boy, goes missing in the 1980s Manhattan, his grief-stricken father Vincent, a puppeteer on America's leading kids TV show, finds solace through his friendship with Eric, the monster that lives under Edgar's bed. In his quest to find the truth to Edgar's disappearance, Vincent is forced into the dark shadows of a city rife with corruption to discover the real monsters live much closer to home. Set against the backdrop of the 1980s AIDS epidemic, Detective Ledroit, tasked to uncover internal corruption in the NYPD, finds himself drawn into the search for Edgar while privately coming to terms with secrets of his own. This is definitely a unique series. Now, it's a rare entry into the streaming space now where it doesn't, it's not based on any existing IP. Um, it crosses a lot of different genres of interest, whether you're talking about drama, whether you're talking about drama, uh, crime, mystery, uh, psychological thriller, um, and it's against the friendly yet oddly creepy aspect of like puppets and uh, kid shows and things like that. That juxtaposition and, and that type of stuff on there really has a visceral kind of feel to it. Now, when watching a trailer, you can't really pin this series down into any particular one type of series or those genres because all of those apply. And it's a really weird but engaging type of trailer. And watching the first two episodes, you kind of go ahead and actually see where it's going a little bit. And it's at least refreshing to go ahead and actually get some type of dark series like this that we can go and actually dig our teeth into that we don't know what's automatically coming for this. Now, for me, Psychological thrillers aren't always a hit because they can definitely mess with your mind, all that kind of good stuff on there. But the crime mystery aspect of it really does go ahead and actually very much engaging aspects for me. So I'm going to categorize myself as a main target audience member for this. The reason why I go ahead and actually give you that is because you should always know what slant, what view that your reviewer comes from. I watched the first two episodes of brand new streaming content on the streaming platforms to go and actually tell you if it's worth your time. I watch so you don't have to. If you like how that says, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let me get into this review. So after watching the first two episodes of Eric, I'm going to go ahead and actually compare this to a little bit like Full Circle, which is actually showing on Max right now, um, or a little bit like Changeling from the 2008 uh, Angelina Jolie uh movie what have you so those are the ones that kind of came to mind that i've actually seen and there's a mixture of that i'm sure there's other content that really that's very similar but those are the two that kind of come to mind for me so let me talk about the first two episodes and then kind of give you some of the uh the aspects of why i gave the grades that i did so in the first episode um we go ahead and actually as i said before we're set in the 80s in new york um and it's a crazy vibe i mean there's stuff that's going on uh there's a high crime rate there's like trash service issues that are going on around there obviously there's drugs going on there's but then there's also the celebrity there's a fast moving there's a high pace of uh real estate and sports and celebrityism that's actually bustling in new york during that time or whatever so it's a very crazy vibe and setting to put this story and you kind of jump into that right away now Scenes with Benedict Cumberbatch and who he interacts with is a very engaging aspect of things. Everything that you see in that first episode is just, he draws you in of kind of knowing who he is. He's kind of like the complex uh, genius type of person on there, which we'll kind of dive into that a little bit or kind of make note of that a little bit later on because it's very much a familiar role for Benedict Cumberbatch. There's solid acting all the way around in that first episode. We go from solid 
intros of the core family where they talk about Benedict Cumberbatch as the main character Vincent but then also the mom Cassie in there and what their marriage is like and how their interaction with Edgar the young boy who I believe is like nine or ten years old and how they go ahead and actually feel internally and then we kind of see their effect on each other and their, their nuclear family and, and how that goes probably the more driving aspect of things is the complexity of Benedict Cumberbatch's character Vincent how he interacts with Edgar and there's that whole aspect of really having pride about his son but then also a driving force to make edgar something that he can also be proud of so it's the father-son dynamic that's always present in real life as well as the movies and they kind of dive into that pretty solidly in the first episode now when edgar goes missing it's a normal day but it's current right after an argument that uh vincent and cassie the, the parents go ahead and actually have and there's really kind of the aspect of the guilt that both parents feel and everything that kind of surrounds him going missing that would kind of start everything off on it really goes and actually plays on a very great dynamic between the two as well as just everything that kind of sets around of you know suspects and what's going on all that kind of good stuff so a lot of, there's a lot that we go ahead and actually see there um the other thing that we kind of dive into into that first episode is that the head detective uh the detroit is a closeted black gay man in new york city at that time and being the head detective on this high profile case or whatever it lends itself to a lot of different things as he begins the investigation and it goes from a routine as much as a routine missing child can be to some other different things that could go and actually lead to possibly other things going on in this investigation so there's a lot that they put into that first episode that really kind of engages you and kind of makes you think oh okay there's a lot i've got a lot of story to go ahead and actually grab onto and a lot of different characters to go ahead and actually track or follow so it's a good cliffhanger that they leave off leave us off with on episode one episode two the first scene kind of leads off with like this press conference at the, at the very beginning was a very good combo of like realistic media sensationalism and the way that they do that type of stuff and then kind of like some more personality things that are popping up between the media dynamics but then also with the father vincent and the mother cassie and we can just kind of see what's what's going to be coming for the rest of the series that there's definitely some uh feelings and thought process that are bubbling up and it kind of really comes up into that first scene it's a very good scene um now there's a lot of things that kind of swing back and forth on the second episode because we go ahead and actually benedict Cumberbatch is kind of having uh his like i said he's the disturbed genius aspect of things so there are swings from what he actually sees what he actually hears his mindset his interaction with other people there is a roller coaster of emotion that goes down with him in the second episode um there's also the obviously aspect of the marriage and Cassie and what she's going through and how she's dealing with both Benedict Cumberbatch's character as well as her own emotions, what she's been dealing with um, outside of that marriage and all that kind of good stuff. And there's some good scenes on that. Um, you're, the, the aspect, there's another aspect that they're trying to do as far as when the Eric character, the monster, the, the figment of Vincent's imagination, him trying to bring that character to life and what it's you know the it, it, we're trying to understand you know what's where what's not what what's real what is not and then also trying to understand you know is this for the betterment uh, is is it benedict cumberbatch is it vince's character trying to work through something or is he al almost taking advantage of the situation to kind of uh bolster what has been like a uh a fledgling tv series whatever so we're trying to figure that out and there's just a lot going on in there and we we deal with those dynamics in the second episode as well um the investigation is continuing to go we kind of uh cast a bigger conspiracy net and things like that so that's going on there as well and there's really more along the lines of character development as far as we're diving more into we carry we carry more about what the characters are going through not necessarily why they're going through it in other words I see a lot about diving into Vincent's character and how he's dealing with stuff, what Cassie's dealing with, what the lead detective is dealing with. And sometimes you forget that it's about a missing kid. So that's a little bit of a weird aspect of it. And, and I kind of got that feel in episode two, but both episodes are uh, very good watching and viewing from the standpoint. So those are my synopsis for those first two episodes. Now, let me give you my grades for the couple of aspects that I kind of grade out. So for storytelling, I'm going to give that a B plus. The reason why is that the missing child stories are always intriguing and having a problematic uh, marriage and 
uh, parental nature, things like that, always kind of put a different spin on it, all that kind of good stuff. But set against the 80s New York um, with the puppet thing, psychological break is very unique, all this kind of stuff. There's just a nice setting for it to just be an extra creep factor on there. The series follows the missing story by exploring uh, Vincent's perspective and the mother dealing with both the missing child and failing marriage, the investigation from the head, detective's vantage point. You know, there's just a lot of good storytelling here. The pacing is very good, although sometimes it could be like there's so much story to get through that we breeze through some scenes really quickly or what have you. And that's just like kind of like a slight nitpick or what have you. But overall, it's chaotically great in the storytelling. So again, B plus for storytelling. In regards to the acting, I'm gonna give acting an A minus. Benedict Cumberbatch is Benedict Cumberbatch. He dives deep into the, the deep, bizarre father, husband, genius of Vincent. And he's also the voice of the Eric monster thing like that. And it's a really like gruff, scary little voice or what have you. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, whether you're going ahead and actually talking about uh, him playing Doctor Strange or you talk about him playing Sherlock or playing uh, in the imitation game or any of, this, of his other roles, he plays the complex genius very well and he does it here again so he's his usual quality self uh now gabby hoffman plays his exasperated wife very well um she's kind of got the mother and wife aspect of nailed and trying to convey these motions and kind of deal with that and i think that was a great portrayal uh, most of the other role players are pretty good and this really rests on cumberbatch's shoulders and his acting and it works very well so again acting a minus so some last little intangibles to kind of just give you some footnotes on this particular series. Um, like I've, I've said multiple times throughout this review, the setting is a character in and of itself in this in this vibe, in this series, what have you. I can't really explain it more than what I have, but it's just the perfect setting for this kind of series. Uh, the complexity by the head detective being a causative gay man in New York City in the 80s um, is a, another layer that I think is welcome because it gives you some richer uh, things to go ahead and actually deal with there and then really wanted to see how the Eric character kind of plays on the end kind of feeling like it's manifesting as far as like almost another ego for um, for Vincent and, and him getting through working through his child's disappearance and things like that and seeing how that ends is a very intriguing concept to come with so again for main target audience members you'll want to watch the first two episodes because fans of Cumberbatch are not going to be disappointed with his performance he's great the actors and the setting around him uh, interact very well they mesh very well for him and if you're really into psychological thrillers or crime drama the story is intriguing and the dialogue dialogue works well mystery fans won't be super engaged but there's enough there to at least check out the first two episodes see if it's your thing as far as mysteries and again, for the casual viewers, why do I say for them to watch two episodes is, is that you're going to go ahead and actually be comfortably introduced to everything in the first episode and really kind of be able to uh, ingest all that and really know what the characters are doing, right? But the second episode is good to understand um, all of the characters as they kind of break off into their different sections of where the story is going to lead them down because they all are taking different journeys. And I think it's really going to be incumbent for you to kind of watch the second episode to really get a vibe of where this series is going. And the Eric character's emergence and its role in the series going forward to see if the series is going to be for you i think because that's where it really comes up is the second episode and you'll kind of see if that'll intrigue you or not as a casual viewer and if it's not at least you'll be entertained by good acting good setting um, good dialogue all that kind of good stuff but again casual viewers get a two episode watch so that's what i have for eric now showing on netflix check it out vincent vincent you stay for the entire review I appreciate you. Do me a favor. If you like the review, go ahead and actually click like, share, and maybe even subscribe to the channel. And if you're not quite convinced, you could go and actually watch one of these other movies that the YouTube algorithm seems to think that you might like of mine. But until next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.